Hey friends, welcome back to The Homestead. My name is Becky and today we are gonna be making homemade pasta. We are doing this for two reasons. One, I am out of pasta in my pantry and two, I have over eight dozen eggs in my house right now and we need to use them up. I don't want them to go to waste and so a good way to preserve eggs is by making pasta. I'm gonna be using the recipe from America's Test Kitchen Cooking School book. If you guys want the Bible of cooking techniques and learning the basic techniques of cooking, go get yourself this book. When I got it, I read it almost like a novel, cover to cover. I don't, if you've followed any of my cooking videos before, you know that I don't follow recipes like to a T. But what this book does is it teaches you the fundamentals and the foundations of good cooking techniques so that you can adapt any recipe to whatever you want, whatever your tastes are. But you know the fundamentals and the recipe is going to turn out really well even if you don't follow it exactly. Now that's different for baking, this is more like cooking. So I will link this book down below and I will also link all the cooking utensils that I'm going to be using today. Today I have my KitchenAid and my pasta attachment and I have my food processor. Now you don't need any of these. When I first started making pasta, I didn't use any of this equipment. When I first started making pasta, I used a bowl and a fork to make my dough and I used a rolling pin to roll out my dough. So, so these tools are not needed, but they do make my life a lot easier when I'm making pasta at this scale. I plan to make at least nine batches of pasta today and so doing it by hand would just probably take too long. So I am gonna be using my food processor to mix the dough, and then I'm gonna be using my KitchenAid to roll out the dough. You certainly can use your KitchenAid to mix the dough in it and also roll out the dough, but I wanna save my KitchenAid motor just for rolling out the dough because I'm gonna be working it like a workhorse today, so I'm gonna use my food processor to mix the dough. So let's get right into it. This is a really simple, easy recipe. You don't need any fancy ingredients. We are gonna start with two cups of all-purpose flour. That's one reason I love this recipe is because you use all-purpose flour. You don't need a fancy flour to do this. About a teaspoon of salt. And then you wanna fluff the flour. By fluffing the flour, that will allow the egg mixture to mix in better if there were any lumps. And three large eggs. If you stay tuned until the end of this video, I will show you how I'm gonna cook some of this fresh pasta. Last week I did a big freezer cooking day and I made some stroganoff and so I not only will show you how I finished that stroganoff that I made in that video, I will show you how to cook this pasta and how delicious it is. Pasta making is honestly more about feel than it is about measurements. You want your dough to stick together but you don't want it to be super sticky either. So this is feeling really good. You want it like play-doh consistency. Because I'm working with fresh eggs, some of my batches may need a little extra water. That's why I got water out or may need a little extra flour. If you're, if you're wondering why I'm pointing down here, it's because I have my bucket of flour in a five gallon bucket down here. Instead of using my flour that I keep in my pantry since I'm gonna be going through a lot of it today, I figured I would go ahead and just grab my six gallon bucket. I will also link where I buy all my bulked goods. I buy my salt in 20 pound bags and I also buy my flour in 50 pound bags. And then if you wanna see inside my pantry and where I store all my bulk goods, I'll leave a link up here and down in the description below as well for a pantry tour. Now what I'm gonna do is just knead this dough for about two minutes. This will create the dough to be even silkier in texture. and that is perfect. So it's nice and soft and supple and smooth. It's even less sticky after kneading it. So what we need to do is let this dough rest for at least a half an hour, which should be no problem because this is one of about 10 batches we're doing today. So I wanna walk you through troubleshooting your pasta dough. I used three eggs in this batch, just like I did the first batch, but the eggs were a lot smaller than they were in the first batch. When I made the first round of dough, the dough balled up on the sides, and it's not doing that with this. Now, if I was to push this together, it would stick together, but I know that this is still too dry. There's not enough moisture in this dough. So what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of water until it starts to ball up around the sides of the food processor. Okay. 
and that's all it took was about one tablespoonful of water and it's now perfect. This is where cooking can be empowering when you learn the fundamentals and what things are supposed to feel like, supposed to look like and smell like and taste like, then you don't need, that's why you don't need to follow a recipe exactly to the T because you can just feel your way through it. And again, it's just beautifully supple dough. When you're making pasta, it's pretty important that you only make one batch at a time. It can be a lot to manage if you're trying to manage four cups of flour and six eggs. Even in the food processor, the food processor just doesn't have the capacity for that. And if you're doing it by hand, then it is a lot to manage that much flour and pasta. So as much as it would be convenient to be able to do two batches at once, in the long run, it's gonna be a lot simpler for you if you just stick with one batch at a time. So now we have 13 batches of dough made and I'm gonna show you how to roll them out. And the way I like to do it is I like to roll all my pasta out into sheets first because I like my pasta sheets to actually dry out a little bit. I find it much easier to cut into the final shape of your pasta. So what you wanna do, whether you're using a KitchenAid or a hand crank pasta machine, is you want the sheet attachment on your pasta or you can use a rolling pin and just roll it out. What we need to do is roll this out into sheets. So I'm gonna cut this into fourths and we'll work with a fourth of the dough at a time. This dough is perfect. It's super soft, but not sticky at all. And you can tell that the gluten has relaxed. There's two reasons why you wanna let your pasta rest. One is you want the flour to hydrate. You want it nice and soft and supple, and you also want the gluten to relax. When you were kneading the pasta dough, you were building up gluten, and if you try to roll it out right away, the pasta would want to keep springing back. It wouldn't keep the shape that you were trying to make. By letting it rest, those gluten proteins relax, and the pasta will hold its shape a lot better. So I do have a container of flour sitting off the side there, and you just want to put a little bit of flour on your counter and just flatten it just a little bit. Your pasta machine is gonna have different number settings on it. You wanna start on the very smallest one. Every pasta machine, their numbers are a little bit different. Some start at zero and this one starts at one. By having it on the lowest setting, it's gonna make our pasta the widest as possible. And we're just gonna go ahead and turn the machine on and run it through. And then I'm gonna fold it in half and run it through again. Did you hear that pop? That's exactly what you want to hear. You want to keep folding it and running it through the widest setting until you hear that pop. That means that the gluten is exactly where you want it to roll out your pasta. Then I'm going to move it down to three. Then I'm going to put it on four. I folded that over just so that I can try to work with a nice even shape here. So I just put a little bit of flour on my pasta and I moved it down to six. Now we did it. This is pasta right here. We can do a million things with it once we get it to this stage. We could make lasagna out of it. Just boil this up for a minute and then make your lasagna. We could make tortellini, ravioli. We could cut this up into bow ties and make bow tie pasta. But I really like having just like a linguine style pasta. Today, I'm just gonna make a linguine style pasta. If you were going to make a ravioli or something that you were gonna fold it over on itself, you might wanna make it a little bit thinner because where you fold it, there's gonna be two layers of pasta, so it'll be twice as thick as it is right now. So what I'm gonna do now with this pasta, I'm gonna set it on this table over here. I have my dining room table and then a fold out table that I put some towels on. And I'm just gonna lay this pasta here to dry a little bit. I found it's easier to roll my pasta through the linguine cutter when it's just slightly dry. I'm gonna go ahead and roll all the pasta out into sheets like this, and we'll just lay them along these tables here. We shouldn't need any flour or anything to keep them from sticking to the tablecloth or the towels that should be just fine. And this right here is actually where we will be drying all the pasta as well. I'll show you guys how to do that when we get to it, but it's not anything fancy on how to dry your pasta so that it's shelf stable. I'm gonna go ahead and get to work. I'm gonna make a bunch of sheets of pasta. So I'm on my last bit of dough here and I've come up with a really fast system to make this go faster since I'm doing so much. One, I turned my KitchenAid on a higher setting, which is working just fine. And I've got four pieces of dough here that I'm working with. I will put four pieces through at the same setting so I don't have to switch it every single time in a row for one piece. 
So these four pieces are going through on the number two setting. And now that I've run all of them through the number two, I'm gonna put it through the number three. My husband actually bought me this pasta roller for the KitchenAid. Um, I probably wouldn't have purchased this for myself, but now that I have it, I absolutely love it. And I would have a hard time going back to rolling with a rolling pin, but I absolutely would if I had to. He, my husband's so sweet. Sometimes he says he feels guilty when he buys me kitchen tools because he says that it's kind of a gift for him because he's the one that benefits from me being in the kitchen and cooking this stuff but it makes my life super easy and I enjoy being in here and doing these kind of things. So it's a win-win for everybody. The reason I like to let the pasta dry out to kind of like a leather stage is because it makes cutting so much easier. You can see that I can stack these sheets of pasta on top of each other and I don't have to use hardly any flour because they've already dried out quite a bit. So what I do then is I stack them on top of each other and I like to cut them to the length of the pasta we want. They're not all gonna be exactly the same length, but pretty close, close enough. And then I will run them through the pasta cutter and we will get a nice thick, I think it's a linguine, but it might actually be a different name. I'm not exactly sure the name of the pasta that we will be making. Um, and you just put them in nice little nests and then we will dust them with a little bit of flour. And just like that, you've got homemade pasta. And just like that, we have a table full of pasta. So what I did is I had that folding table out here. I went ahead and got all the pasta on one table because I want it underneath this fan. Like I mentioned earlier, yes, I did clean this fan prior to turning it on. And I have this box fan here too, and I cleaned that one as well. So I'm not just spewing dust all over my beautiful pasta. So this pasta is gonna need to sit here for probably two or three days to dry. You need it to dry absolutely completely before you package it. You don't need anything fancy to dehydrate your pasta, just air movement and time. No dehydrators or anything like that. Actually, if you use a dehydrator, the pasta gets really weird because it almost cooks the pasta. And so you don't wanna do that. You just want it to dry out. So I really like having the tablecloth underneath because I, help, I feel like that helps like wick moisture. And then I just have the two fans on it and then it'll just sit here for a few days. All I do once it's completely dry is I put them in a few freezer Ziploc bags and I store them in the pantry. Uh, if you wanna see them in the pantry, I've got a video up above where I do a pantry tour where you can see what my pantry looks like. And there is some dried pasta in that video as well. But if you wanna stick around, I'm gonna show you how to cook up some of this fresh pasta. So if you watch that freezer cooking video, you'll know how I made this stroganoff and you'll know that I did not add any sour cream to it before I froze it. I have frozen the sour cream in the stroganoff and it freezes just fine, but I wanted it to take up less space in the freezer. So that's why I didn't add the sour cream. This is homemade sour cream. That's why it is in this jar. See how thick that is? I have a video on this too if you wanna watch how to make your own sour cream. It is super easy and super easy to get nice thick sour cream. So I'm gonna put about two cups of sour cream in here. So what I do with the little leftover bits that's in the jar is I just put a little bit of water in here and I shake it up and then I give it to my dogs and they love it. So we have our water boiling and I'm gonna salt this. We are ready to put our noodles in. I'm gonna stir this water just a little bit so it's already moving before I put the pasta in so that they don't stick together. Now this is fresh pasta, so this is only gonna take a couple minutes to cook. Stroganoff is my husband's favorite dinner, so this is kind of a treat that he's getting stroganoff tonight. The best way to know if they're done is just to taste it. Nope, those need a little bit longer. They taste good, but they're still a little bit more al dente than I'd like. I walked away. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to turn this off. I think they're done. Don't walk away. I don't want to overcook them. Yeah, they're done. And we'll just dump these right in there. I'm going to have my husband come down and give this a try. So we always serve it with a dollop of sour cream and some fresh pepper. Here you go. He does exist. <laughs> I'm just Becky's other arm. He's Becky's other arm, did you hear that? So we're gonna have him taste it. It should be, it's gonna be hot. Oh yeah. It smells really good. Good. As always. Oh, thanks. Let's see what he has to say. Maybe one of the best times you've ever made it, actually. Oh, I think really? maybe because the pasta was like just 
made or something, but super tasty. Becky, that's really good. Oh, good. The noodles are... Are they perfect. overcooked? No. Oh, they're not, I wouldn't say they're like al dente. They're like soft. I don't like them. They're new noodles, so... Perfect. Fresh noodles. And it new noodles. Fresh, <laughs> right they're new saying. noodles. Mm. Yes, this is always a favorite. Yeah, Very I think tasty. it's one of your favorite meals. Very tasty. Thanks for making this. You're welcome. Love you. Thank you. Let me know if you guys like to make homemade pasta. This is the best way I found that I can have homemade pasta on a regular basis with my work schedule. Because I work full time, I don't wanna make homemade pasta after work. I just don't have the energy for that. So by making it in bulk batches when I have the time, because today was just gross. It, we've been really blessed with some beautiful days and today it was rainy. So I figured today would be a good day. Preserve some eggs in the form of homemade pasta. I want you to know I'm not a purist. I don't only eat homemade pasta. We do have a pantry where I keep this. See, this is real life. I'm just going to show you my pantry unedited. But I do have a stack of Costco pasta in here as well. These are the Ziploc bags that I'm going to store the homemade pasta in once it dries. All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today while we made a whole mess of pasta over there. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you give making pasta a try. Like I said, I'm going to let that dry there for a couple days, and then I'll just package it up in some Ziploc bags. I'm actually going to reuse the Ziploc bags that I used when I was letting the dough rest. I hope you guys are having a fantastic evening. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps YouTube know that um, you guys are enjoying my content that I'm creating for you guys. If you want to know what else I've got going on around here, I've got a whole bunch of other fun things planned. Go ahead and subscribe. So I hope you guys have a fantastic evening, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.